You know, if you're brand new or just starting to learn how to use Articulate Storyland for the first time, then you're going to want to know these simple tips for working with scenes and slides. Stick around. Hey there, folks, Tim Slade here from the eLearning Designers Academy. You know, once you understand the difference between scenes and slides in Articulate Storyline and how content is structured within a project, again, think of it like your slides being pages in a book and multiple slides being scenes or chapters in a book. Once you understand all of that stuff, then you'll likely find yourself asking questions like, can I reorder or renumber my scenes? How do I connect different scenes and how can I move slides between scenes. Well, don't worry. That's exactly what I'm going to show you how to do in this video. So let's jump into it. All right. So here I am in Articulate Storyline where I've been working on this project. And as we can see here, I'm in story view for my project where I can see a high level overview of my entire project, including all of my various scenes. And how do I know I'm in story view? Well, besides the fact that it, it looks like story view, I can see that listed up here in this tab here, story view. Now, there's a lot of different ways that you can work with scenes, rearrange scenes, connect scenes, rename scenes, add new scenes, and all that good stuff. So I'm going to go through a bunch of different tips that can help you work with uh, story view uh, and work with your scenes within your project. Now, the first thing that I want to highlight, which is the easiest thing, is how to add and rename a scene. So anytime you want to add a new scene to your project, all you have to do is right click anywhere in this gray space and you can click to add a new scene and it'll add a new scene with a blank slide. And, you know, as I mentioned in my other video about working with um, scenes and slides and understanding the difference between the two, uh, a scene is just a collection of of slides to help you organize your content, like chapters in a book, right? You can also add a new scene from the home tab in story view. There's an option here for new scene, just like that. And it'll add another scene. Uh, and renaming scenes is equally as easy. All I have to do is double click here in the title and I can call this, you know, my conclusion, if that's the conclusion to my course or whatever I want to call it, right? So adding scenes, renaming scenes, super easy. It's equally as easy to delete scenes. All you have to do is right click on the scene and select the option for delete and it will delete it. And I'll confirm here. And the important thing to know is that it's going to delete all of the slides within the scene as well. So for example, if I were to delete scene four here and all of these slides within it, you would delete those scenes. Um, I'm not going to do that, but I will delete scene five here. I don't need that. I'll delete it there. And of course, you know, let's say I'm working on a project here and I have this scene here with this one slide. I can right click. I also have the option to duplicate the scene if I want to duplicate the scene and all the slides within it as well. So that's, you know, really easy stuff, adding scenes, renaming scenes and deleting scenes. Now, uh, let's start talking about setting the starting scene, renumbering scenes and connecting scenes. One of the things that a lot of people find frustrating about working with scenes or working in story view and storyline is that you can't actually move and rearrange your scenes. You know, if you click on this, you'd think you'd want to be able to move it and rearrange things to lay out your course. The thing to know about Storyline is that as you connect your scenes and slides together, it's going to automatically structure that scene structure. All right. But there are some things that we can do to uh, renumber scenes or select the starting scene. So let's start with the starting scene option. You'll notice here as we look at our scenes, they're in order. Scene one, scene two, scene three, scene four, right? Now you'll notice on scene number one right here, we have this little red flag icon. That red flag indicates the starting scene within our project. And what does that exactly mean? Well, that means what is going to be the very first scene and slide that the learner is going to see when they launch your e-learning course. So if I were to publish this out and send it out to my learners, learners are going to start on scene one on slide 1.1, right? That seems pretty straightforward. But one of the cool things that we can do is we can actually change the starting scene. So let's say, for example, I was designing my project and I decided I wanted scene number two to be the starting scene, right? I can select scene number two and up here in the home tab in the ribbon, I can select start scene or the starting scene. And you'll see that it changes that one to scene number one and scene number one that becomes scene number two, right? Uh, and of course, if I want to change it back, change it back just like that. I can make any scene in my project the starting scene. That's where the project will begin. Uh, 
Now, the other thing that people commonly ask about is renumbering scenes, right? If I can't reorder uh, or move around my scenes, at least can I renumber them? Well, yes, absolutely. So let's say, for example, I wanted this one, my conclusion. This is my course summary and conclusion. Right now, that's scene number three. Why is it scene number three? Well, that's just the order in which I built it, right? Let's say I want that to be scene number four, because that's more logical, because it's the last scene. It's the conclusion of my course instead of scene number four right here, which is not the very last scene that I, I want in my project. I can renumber this. All I have to do is click on it, and I can go to the index here in the Home tab in the ribbon, and I can choose what number it's going to be. So if I want it to change from three to four, I'll just make it number four, and you'll see it reorders everything automatically. So that's how to add a new scene, rename scenes, delete scenes, set the starting scene, and renumber your scenes. Now, the final thing that we're going to look at is how to connect your scenes. So when a, when a learner goes through your course, they're going to start on the starting scene here. They're going to go from slide 1.1 to 1.2 to 1.3. But where are they going to go after that? Well, this is one of the things that can be sometimes confusing for folks when you're first learning Storyline. If I open up slide 1.3 here and I look at the triggers panel here, you'll see it says jump to slide, next slide, when the user clicks or swipes the next button, right? What that means is jump to the next slide within scene number one. But in this case, if I go back to my story view, there is no other scene. So it's going to take the learner nowhere. I don't have anything that tells Storyline to go to scene number two or three or four. And this is where we have to connect our scenes together to tell Storyline the flow that we want the learner to go in. And there's a lot of different ways we can connect our scenes. We can do it easily here in story view, or we can do it manually uh, in slide view. So let me show you one of the easy ways to do it. The easy way to connect your scenes together is to simply click on the link icon down here at the bottom. Sometimes you won't see it. You see here on this scene, it's not there. Why is it not there? Who knows, you know? But if I start clicking on it, or I click on the scene, it'll eventually show up. I think it's because this is a result slide. But if you're not seeing that little link icon at the bottom of the scene, just click on the slide, click on the scene, it'll eventually show up. But this is one way that we can connect our scenes together. So if I click on this link icon, you can see here, I can link to a slide or I can link to another scene. So for example, let's say after they finish 1.3, I want them to go to scene number two. I'll select link to scene, scene number two. And you're going to see this is a great example where Storyline is automatically reordering our scenes and slides based off of what we just did there. So after they go from slide 1.3, then they go to slide 1.2. Now, what's important to know about this is if I go back into slide view for slide 1.3, you're going to see that I actually edited the default trigger for my next button. Instead of saying jump to next slide when the user clicks the next button, now it says jump to scene, scene two when the user clicks or swipes next. So all it does is automatically edit that trigger to take us to that next scene, right? Let's go back to story view. Let's do that one more time. I'll connect scene two to scene three and then we'll manually connect scene number four. So again, if I wanna connect scenes two to scene three, I can click on that slide there. So here's my link icon, click the link and we'll link to scene. I could link just directly to a slide, but I'm just gonna to link to the scene. And we will link scene two to scene three. And again, it put scene uh, three underneath scene two. And if I click on the slide here, or click on the scene, we can see that link here. You'll notice these red arrows here. One of the things that's also important to know about uh, working in story view is that if you hover over the arrow, or if I click on it, there we go, you'll see it shows me the trigger uh, that's associated with that that's bringing the learner there. So that's pretty helpful. Now let's talk about manually connecting scenes together. If I were to go to the very end of the scene, slide 3.5, what if I wanted to connect the next button on this slide to um, scene number four. Well, all I have to do is edit the default trigger for the previous next button. You have to remember when you create a new project in Storyline, every slide automatically gets default triggers for the previous and next button in the player. So if I want to edit this player trigger, I can just double click on it and I can open up the trigger wizard and I can edit it here. I could also edit it here directly in uh, the trigger panel here, but in this case, I will just do jump to. Do I wanna to jump to a slide or do I wanna to jump to a scene? In this case, I'm just gonna to jump to the scene. So I'll jump to scene. What scene am I gonna to jump to? The next scene, I could do that. Or I can jump to scene four, be even more specific when the user clicks the next button. That one's super important. If I were to have selected next scene, it's just gonna do the next scene in succession from three to four. But what if 
I'm not wanting them to go to four. I'm wanting them to go to scene five, right? Um, and later I change the order. It's going to do the next one in succession. So I always prefer to be specific and jump to scene number four in this case. Click OK. Nothing happens here. But if I go back to story view, you'll see now scene number four is down there. All right. All right, now the final thing I want to show you is how can you reorder slides within your scene. This is another thing you might commonly do. Let's say I wanted to move slide 2.2 down here to be slide, you know, between 2.4 and 2.5. You can move and reorder your slides no differently than how you can move and reorder slides in PowerPoint. So if I wanted to move this slide, I can just click and move it down here, and I'll get this little blue arrow that indicates where it'll go, and I can put it right there, and it'll reorder my slides. I can also reorder slides between scenes. Let's say hypothetically I wanted to move slide 2.5, and I wanna make it here on uh, the beginning of scene three. I can just move this down here, and it'll reorder it accordingly. All right, so. Those are some of my practical tips to help you work with your scenes and slides and articulate storyline. It's pretty simple stuff, but you know, if you don't know about it all, it's easy to start running into different roadblocks that can be super annoying. All right. I want to know what are the tips or questions you have about working with your scenes and slides and storyline. Share your tips, questions, and everything else down in the comments. And of course, while you're down there, make sure to check out all of my resources, how-to videos, and articles to help you continue your learning and storyline. Otherwise, I want to thank you so much for watching. If you haven't done so already, make sure to click those like, subscribe, and bell buttons to get alerted the next time I publish a video just like this one. And of course, join us inside the eLearning Designers Academy, where we help new instructional designers and eLearning developers grow their careers by focusing on skills first. Otherwise, my name is Tim Slade, and until next time, I'll see you around.